Hey everyone, this is Josiah from Grace Note Forge. This is going to be outside the norm of my other videos, but I've seen a lot of people online asking questions about Maker Juice wax cast resin, and specifically whether or not it can be used with the Olegu Mars 3D printer. So I wanted to share my experience and honest review with this product to hopefully help anyone who's been looking around for options for a lost wax castable resin. Now, just a disclaimer, I'm not a professional and I'm also not affiliated with Maker Juice Labs in any way. I came across this product when I was looking for affordable options for castable resins and thought that I would give this one a try. At the time of recording this, Maker Juice Labs does not list any settings for the Alegumar 3D printer, but they do show settings for the Anycubic Photon, which is very similar to the Alegumars and even cures at the same 405 UV wavelength. So that, along with a very affordable price of 55 US dollars for a castable UV resin, was reason enough to do the trial and error in figuring out the right settings. And after several failed attempts, here are the settings that I found work the best so far using the Chi2 box slicing software. Which brings me to my biggest issue with this resin. In my experience, this resin really needs long exposure times, at least around 30 seconds per layer, making even smaller prints take several hours to complete. That being said, this resin still has a lot going for it. For a real world test, I designed a 3 stone ring in Blender and then used the same Chitu box settings as I mentioned before. I then rotated the ring 45 degrees and used the automated heavy supports for printing. And one thing that I like with this resin is that there's no need to use a priming layer on the build plate before printing. I've been able to go straight to printing on a clean plate with no issues. The resin washes away cleanly with mean green or isopropyl alcohol, and one thing that I've noticed is that the prints come out pretty soft and flexible before they're cured, which is something that I personally find actually helps when removing the supports. After a few hours in UV light, it cures well and even changes to a lighter color, which is one of my favorite features because it really helps to show any uncured spots of resin that might be in your print. Once the print has been cured, it also becomes more rigid and easy to sand away imperfections. Another thing to keep in mind is that this resin seems to develop a kind of skin and becomes thicker if left out for too long, so I recommend filtering and bottling the resin after a print. And thankfully, Maker Juice Labs provides recommendations for a burnout cycle for this resin on their website, which is really helpful. After casting the ring in silver, it's ready to be cleaned up, polished, and have the stone set. And here's the final result. Let me know what you guys think, and if you have any experience with this resin, or any tips with resin casting in general, feel free to leave them down in the comments. Hopefully this helps out anyone who's been considering this product, and if it has, please like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching!